Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. We're going to continue talking about graphing features of the TI-89 calculator, and we're going to talk here in this section about graphing trigonometric functions, functions that involve sine, cosine, tangent, etc. And uh, those are things that you're going to be doing constantly uh, with this calculator, graphing trig functions. So it's probably a good idea to talk in some detail about it. Uh, you know, first thing you want to do, just to sort of get into the section, make sure you're in function mode, which you set in the mode menu. You should be most of the time. And for now, let's go ahead and keep ourselves in radian mode. Because most in engineering science classes, you're going to be dealing in radians. I'll show you how to switch it over to degrees and graph in degrees also. For now, let's stick with radians. Go ahead and go into the y equals menu. And at first glance, graphing a trig function is really no different than graphing a, a regular algebra function. There's nothing fancy here, um, but there are a few gotchas. So let me go ahead and put sine on the stack, and we'll put sine of x, and we'll close the parentheses. That's probably the most simple um, trig function that we can just graph. So let's go ahead and put enter there. And so we're ready to graph it. And default zoom on the, uh, on the guy there. Uh, we can check that out by going to the window menu. We've got default zoom going here, negative 10 to 10. Uh, let's go ahead and graph the sine function and see what the calculator does. So it's doing what we expect it to do. It's graphing a nice little sine wave. It is kind of squished. It's not very tall, but that's because the default um, range for the, for the y-axis is plus 10, minus 10. And, and as you know, sine only goes up to plus and minus 1. So that's the reason for that. Uh, but more or less it looks like a sign. It crosses through the origin here in the right manner. It's going up and down. So it's doing what we, what we want it to do. But it, it leaves a little bit to des uh, a little bit um, leaves something to be desired here because although it is graphing along the range that we have and, and, and uh, along the window that we, ha that we have specified, which is the default window plus minus 10 on the x-axis and on the y-axis, and you can trace it. You can go into F3 and you can trace it. I mean, you can definitely get some values here. You can zoom in and everything else. I mean, it works just fine. The only thing about it is that a lot of times when you're graphing trig functions, uh, you see the tick marks here for the x-axis, because they're, pl they're plus minus 10, this is a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So literally, this tick mark here, this is 1 radian, 2 radians, 3 radians, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 radians. That's what the x-axis is, and here's the negative radians. But a lot of times when we're doing trig, uh, trigonometry and calculus, we really want to look at the, uh, the tick marks in terms of, of multiples of pi. In other words, you probably, when you graph this by hand, you probably put a tick mark at pi over 2, probably put another tick mark at 2 pi over 2, which is pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, because those are the, 